<sighs> this thing's sad now. Well, not really the monitor, it's just uh, this VGA cable. And if you're wondering what's in the background, it's, it's another sadness. Anyways, uh, this is something I really hate about VGA monitors. Um, actually, like almost every CRT monitor, even going back to like the MDA CGA days, they always had a permanently attached video cable. Why? Like I get that it only has one input, but come on, just, you could have just put a port on the back so I don't end up in a situation like this. Yeah, the, uh, the screen itself still works fine, as we can see, but if I plug this up to this netbook here... Yeah, that's, um... I don't know about you, but that's, uh, pretty green. If I uh, wiggle this uh, cable around, oh, oh, it's almost correct. It's a little bit blue though. Yeah, so kind of at the end of the cable here, there is some sort of issue, and it's actually extremely hard to get the correct picture out of it. You basically have to like twist it and hold it in a very specific way to get it to do it. Uh, so yeah, this cable's kind of cooked. Uh, I've been thinking that there's some sort of break in the, like, end of the connector, like, right here. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way to, like, open up this connector without just completely destroying it, so that's kind of off the table. So, basically, I just need to replace the entire cable. So, uh, that's what we're going to be doing. I thought I had a beige VGA cable around somewhere, just so it would kind of match the original, but... I couldn't find it, so I'll just use a generic black one. All right, so this is an NEC Multisync 50. Uh, I've had this for several years now. Uh, this is actually the only beige, well, it's more yellow now at this point, but uh, only beige CRT monitor that I actually have. I have a uh, early 2000s Trinitron, and that's kind of silver with that kind of gray vioplastic. Uh, and then I have an E-Machines monitor, which is silver and a different gray. So, yeah, I kind of want this to be working again so I can, you know, kind of, sort of color match it to uh, older systems. It's not the greatest monitor in the world. I definitely need to clean it. It can do 1280 by 1024 at 60 hertz, but really, in my opinion, I don't think it looks too hot doing that. It's pretty blurry and... Uh, and 60 hertz is never really great on the eyes. The exact model number is PN7501. As you can see, it was made October 1999. Yeah, I got this monitor probably probably eight years ago. Uh, <clears throat> I actually got it with my NEC. I think it's like a, I think it was GT110 or something. I think that's the model number. Uh, I, it's been on the channel actually a couple times. It's uh, AMD K62 SuperSocket 7 system that's uh, it's really not all that great, but I have it. But this is the matching monitor for it. It was purchased with this monitor. Uh, this was used at a dentist office for some amount of time. It was eventually just kind of uh, not really decommissioned. It just kind of was left to sat on a desk for like probably since like the mid 2000s and was just never really used after that until uh, until I managed to uh, sweet talk my way into getting it. All right, so let's go ahead and bust this thing open. Generic disclaimer, yada yada, don't open your CRT, something something, high voltage, uh, you'll die, something, don't do it. Uh, so I actually have no idea um, where the screws even are. So there's two screws here and down here. This can't be the only ones, right? 
And yeah, here's the uh, permanently attached cable. It looks almost like you could pull it out, but you can't, unfortunately. Like, guys, this would have been the perfect spot for a VGA port. I'm just saying, you could have did it for like 10 more cents. Would make my life right now a lot easier. Uh, so probably take the base off of it first. Now what I'm hoping I'm gonna find inside is that the cable is on some sort of connector that I can uh, more easily uh, chop this cable up and solder to. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. Actually, I don't know if that was necessary. That was definitely not necessary. <laughs> this plastic is so old it hasn't moved and like, uh, yeah, that probably hasn't come off since 1999. Is this thing really just two screws? Because there's, I don't, I don't see any way for there to be screws at the top of this thing. Also, these screws are like not tight at all. Uh, I should probably get like a blanket or a towel or something to uh, set this on so I can, so I don't scratch the screen. I guess that's it. I guess the rest of it's just clipped together. Oh. Uh, is now a good time to mention I've technically never taken apart a CRT? I mean, I've taken apart my EMAC, but that's like pretty well shielded. I've never just taken apart just like a standalone CRT. So I think it's clipped together at the top kind of thing. Let's use a plastic spudger that never work in my experience. Yep, as always, it just snaps the tips off. Seriously, why do people use plastic spudgers? I, I don't get it. They're completely useless in my opinion. Yep, oh, there we go. Okay, once you kind of got one of the clips, it wasn't too bad. Try not to hit the neck. I mean, I expected it to be dirty. I guess that's maybe a little better than I expected. So here we are. Um, I'll discharge this thing in a second. I'm just not going to touch anything for the moment. Okay, well, here's what we have. Um, here's the VGA cable, and it's on the neck board of the CRT. I was... I really thought it would be, like, on the, the main PCB, but no, which means I have to deal with this. I have to deal with the neck board. Uh, probably also a good time now to mention that I've also uh, never discharged a CRT before. So, you know, I got the uh, the classic screwdriver and a alligator lead. Now I just gotta find where I'm gonna clip this thing to. There's, um, there's these uh, screws here that look like they would be ground screws, I would assume. Normally, I think normally the, recomm the suggestion is you uh, you go for the frame around the CRT, and that definitely looks like that's uh, what the uh, frame of the CRT is mounted to. Uh, now this is the part that I've always been worried about, is going up against the glass of the CRT. Like that's, like that's not fun. Yeah, I'm definitely touching the anode and uh okay I definitely I definitely touched it I was very much hitting metal in there so all right it is definitely discharged there was a uh, no spark unless that wasn't a ground connection which um that'll be interesting to find out if it wasn't <laughs> Could reconnect it here to the uh, the shielding. That is definitely ground. Ooh. Okay, I didn't hear a hiss, so that's good. Okay, I decided that was probably a little bit too much work for me at the moment, or at least more effort than I really want to put into this thing. So uh, we're just gonna go with the uh, not as good option and just uh, cut the uh, connector off 
and uh, put a different one on. This is the connector that I got. It's actually one of these that has uh, screw terminals. Uh, so that'll be a lot easier than having to solder it, especially if I uh, messed up any of the wire placements and whatnot. I just got these on Amazon. They're a little bit pricier than I wanted. They're like 14 bucks for a two pack. Seven bucks per connector is not great, but kind of didn't really have a choice at this point. Uh, so unfortunately I am gonna have to lose this uh, like ferrite bead thing on the cable because there is just not enough cable here to really work with. Um, especially because I need to leave a little bit on this connector end so I can map out which wires are going to which pins in here. Uh, and then I'm going to match up uh, this pin out with the cables uh, according to a male 15 pin VGA pin out that I found online. That way I can map out the cables and know which, uh, which wires are going to uh, which pins on the new connector. So this is supposed to reduce interference. Uh, that, there's nothing I can really do about that. I guess I could probably get one that like clamps on another one, but I don't know. Also, this should hopefully fix the issue because I'm pretty sure the issue with the cable is in like this little section here or it's like right here at the end of the cable. I think what happened was this like got, this was bent at a pretty serious angle for some amount of time. Don't know if I initially caused the damage or not, but just over the years this has gotten worse and uh, yeah, I just, this is just the best option at this point. Oh, this feels... This is gonna feel really wrong. Here goes nothing. Ooh. That's never gonna feel good. There she is. Um, I don't know if there's actually 15 wires in there, or well, 14, because the connector's missing a pin. But like, I think like five of the pins in the VGA connector are all ground anyways. So one of these might be just one ground. I'll. I'll I'll mess around with this, I'll strip this back and, uh, deal with it. There we go, now I have a, uh, thing to work with that I can probe with the multimeter. I'm not gonna do that on camera because, frankly, it's gonna be really boring, uh, really long, so we're gonna cut to, hopefully, me actually successfully, uh, getting this wired up to the new connector and testing it out for the first time. Alright, it's, uh... All right, it's, uh, done. <laughs> um, this was kind of a nightmare to do, and also a little easier than I kind of thought. I was having some real issues figuring out which wires actually were going to which pins. Um, you may notice that this black wire is not hooked up to anything. Apparently, it doesn't do anything. Except that, continuity-wise, it is ground but it also connects to pins 1, 3, which is the red and blue signal, but not the green signal, at least from the old connector. And it's also connected to all of the ground pins that you would expect, but like, I don't know. I tried hooking this, I tried, you know, connecting it to the ground connection. It didn't work as a ground. Uh, the picture looked very bad um, doing that. So the only way I could get the ground to work properly, this might be one of the worst things I've ever done in a repair, but it works. It works and it looks pretty good, so I'm, I'm leaving it. I had to twist some of the shielding into like a wire and put it in the ground terminal. That worked somehow. That, that's what made it work. I was, it wasn't working correctly before that. It was like really distorted and dark. As soon as I did that, it all started working correctly, and the uh, monitor ID thing seems to be working. It shows up as, well, a Multisync 70, which that's always been an issue with this monitor. For some reason, uh, NEC didn't specifically say that it's a Multisync 50 in its firmware, for whatever reason, so uh, the OS always just assumes it's a Multisync 70, which is a little bit annoying, but that's just how it is. Now, um... I forgot to put one of these uh, strain relief things on the uh, on the cable before I wired it up, and I'm not taking this apart. Absolutely not. Um, no way am I doing that. So uh, we don't have one of these now. 
Uh, but I have a different solution. Okay, well, I didn't think that would actually work, but the, uh... Screwing it down with just cutting the, uh, thing open actually worked... Better than I thought it would? And I'm sad, because I busted out the hot glue gun for this. I was gonna make it really jank, but... No, it actually, like, worked okay. It still looks awful, but, like... I don't care. Oh, that's one side down. If you're wondering what I did with the black wire, I just uh, snipped the very tip of it off and just kind of shoved it in there. Oh no. All right, well that actually, that actually looks pretty good. You can't even tell except for the split thing that it looks like a complete disaster inside, but, and uh, it's actually got reasonably decent uh, cable uh, retention. So that's, that's nice. All right, let's give it this the uh, the final test. Well, it still turns on. Please excuse this uh, complete mess. All right, gateway netbook. Let's go. Uh, this does not have the screws on the VGA port, so we're just gonna loosely plug this in here. If I okay, I have to unscrew the screws a little bit to get this to fit. Not quite like a normal VGA cable, where they're just kind of loose in there. That was good. Now, uh, for some reason, it's a little picky. I think this is just the netbook thing. I've kind of experienced this before. I basically just have to go in here and actually tell it to uh, extend my Windows desktop to this monitor. Monitor wakes up. And there we go. It's working perfectly now. Please excuse the uh, display flicker. Let me see if I can fix that. Looks worse in real life, but it's better on camera now. <laughs> Don't know why this is flickering so much on camera. Somehow the CRT is better. Anyways, yeah, the color works fine. And I can like move the cable around a little bit. And it stays stable. Uh, this is running at 800 by 600 because, frankly, that's the best looking resolution, other than 640 by 480. 1024 by 768 is okay. It's not too blurry. It's just not amazing looking. Go to 1024 by 768. Obviously, the uh, the background is not scaled for that resolution, but it looks just fine actually. Other than you know. It just the normal monitor not being the crispest. I'm happy. It works. I have uh, my only beige CRT left uh, working now, so I'm happy with that. I know this was a really simple, basic, kind of janky video, and uh, that's all I intended it to be. So uh, yeah, see you see you in the next one.